Hello friends, welcome back to my channel, welcome back to another video tutorial. Today I'm going to talk you through how I made this lovely decoupage and clay piano. This is an MDF grand piano jewellery box. It came flat packed and I have already glued it all together. If you would like to purchase one of these there's going to be a link in the description below for you. So the first thing that I did is of course put it all together and then I used white acrylic gesso to prime the MDF so that it's ready for further work. You could use acrylic paint or chalk paint for that instead or even PVA glue or varnish. The main thing is that you want to prime your MDF before you start using water-based products so that it doesn't kind of fall apart. Once I have primed it, I take this MDF circle, which I have already also primed with the same white acrylic gesso, and a printed out picture from Digital Collage Club. So this is a picture that I printed using my inkjet printer, so a normal standard printer, and I used photo paper. It's important to use photo paper so that the ink doesn't run. So originally this picture was from a journaling kit, and I found this picture in one of the pages. I cropped it out so that it was circle shaped and then printed it out. If you would like to have a look at some of the other things that Digital Collage Club has to offer, then make sure to check out the links in the description down below. There's also some discount codes for you to use if you wanted to sign up. Because I'm using photo paper and it's quite thick, I first spray it with a bit of water and let it soak for a few minutes. So I apply a coat of Mod Podge, dab my picture dry, apply it onto the circle, I use a cloth napkin to get any air bubbles or excess glue out from underneath the picture. and then apply another coat of Mod Podge over the top of the picture. Next, I move on to the decorating of the actual piano itself. Right now, I'm gonna be using a lot of DAS air drying clay, wood PVA glue, so from a hardware store rather than from the kids or craft sections in normal shops and I decided that I wanted to apply clay over the body of pianos so I did it in three segments so I roll a bit of clay out so that it was a couple of millimeters thick Measure out how much I'm going to need to cover half of the main part of the piano. Put some PVA glue onto it. And then apply my clay. I use a simple clay tool set to help me get rid of any clay excess. And then once I've applied my clay and glued it on, I use a plastic file to help me make creases in the clay. That air drying clay is quite prone to kind of creasing, making it look like it's leather anyways when you work with it. But with help of a plastic file, it just makes it a lot easier. The plastic file helps me control the amount of pressure that I put on and also it helps prevent any fingerprints from staying on. I've tried it with cling film. The cling film is too thin in my personal opinion and it leaves fingerprint marks. So I find a plastic file sheet works best and then I do the same thing on the other half. Thank you. 
I pay extra attention to blend the seams of where the two pieces of clay meet so that when they dry and they shrink a little bit so that there's no gap. Then I do the exact same thing on the lid of the piano. So I roll out a piece of clay, kind of roughly measure out how much I'm gonna need so that it's easier for me to work with it. Crease it through the plastic sheet and then once I'm happy with the creases, I once again carefully remove any excess and tidy it up. Next I make an indent in the clay for my decoupage circle to sit in. So I put the circle down, I press it in, apply some wood glue and then I press it back down. I left it to dry overnight and I actually ended up putting a tin of paint over the top of it so that the circle could adhere properly. Once my clay is fully dry, I move on and I start applying clay molds. The look that I was going for for this piano was that it was a piano that was left in a very old pretty garden and it was just forgotten about and the nature had started taking over and making that piano a part of the garden. So I used a lot of these floral molds from this redesign with Prima mold. Once again, the links for these molds are going to be in the description if you wanted to have a look. So I just kind of first make the molds themselves, place them where I want them to be and then once I'm happy with the way that they are looking then I go back and I apply glue onto every single one of them and put them back in place. Also, if you wanted to, you could definitely do this and the previous step at the same time. I just didn't have the time to do that. So as you can see, I'm showing you how I'm doing the lid. And then I did the sides of the piano in the same way. Again, I just made the molds, see where I want them to go and then glue them on. I also used this Sicilian borders mold from Redesign with Prima to go over the lid that covers the keys and around the bottom part of the body of the piano itself.
and then I went back and applied some more of these floral molds onto the feet. So this is what it looks like when it's fully dry. Now we move on to the painting part. So the first thing that I do is take some black acrylic gesso and cover all of the molds, the whole piano in this black acrylic gesso. Again, you could use acrylic paint or chalk paint, whatever paint you have as long as it's a dark color because after that we're going to be using a dry brush so we want this dark color to be inside of all of the creases inside of the molds crevices etc so that when we go over with our lighter shades we always have this dark color in all of the bits where the dry brush doesn't get Once the black gesso is dry, as I said, I take a natural bristle brush, I leave it dry and using this dry brushing technique, I apply it over the first batch of clay that we first applied. So only on the barky, leathery looking parts. Once I'm done with the outside of the piano, I take a larger brush to make the process a bit easier and quicker and apply this same brown paint on the inside of the piano and also the bottom as well. Next I take this darker brown which is burnt umber so it has a slightly different tint to it and again using a dry brush I apply it over the first batch of the clay that we applied and I'm starting to add dimension. Next we move on to all of our floral molds. So first thing that I do is take this green paint and again dry brush it all over the leaves. As you can see I'm trying to leave out the flowers as much as I can. In the next few shots you will see me use different mixes of different paints, again painting the leaves and the flowers to add more dimension and more colour to our flowers, make them kind of blend in with the decoupage picture a little bit and then I used brighter colours to go over the flowers. That's just my personal preference. I wanted them to be kind of pinkish and reddish looking but it's completely up to you what colors you decide to use
Once I'm happy with the way that my molds are looking, I take some of this sparkle paste and using a small brush, I gently brush on a little bit of this basically glitter over the flower parts. To seal the piano, I decided to use Annie Sloan's clear wax. Any kind of sealing wax will do for this job. The reason why I decided to use wax is using varnish on this piece is gonna be just a lot of pain because there's a lot of parts that are fiddly, a lot of parts that will need to dry for ages. So wax was a lot easier to use and I also like the sheen that wax gives. I did however use Polyvan's decorator's varnish in dead flat finish to go over the decoupage picture and I applied three coats of it. Once my sealing is finished I take some of these handmade flowers from Little Birdie Crafts and silicon glue and I start gluing them onto the outside of the piano. So as I said earlier I really wanted to go for a kind of overgrown piano look like it was left in the middle of some absolutely beautiful but abandoned garden and it's now starting to get taken over by nature i wanted to make it look a bit enchanted and a bit magical and i thought paper flowers were just the perfect thing to use in this case so i used different flowers from different packs and just kind of dot them around the outside of the piano where i feel it's needed Once I'm done with the flowers, I take a little bit of this gold metallic wax by Little Birdie Craft, a tiny brush and apply it over the black keys of the piano. And then once again, I take a dry natural bristle brush, a little bit of brown paint and I brush it over the flowers because I mean, the piano looks very overgrown and the flowers just kind of stand out a little bit too much with, with the glitter on them and they, they do genuinely just look a bit too new. So I wanted to dirty them up a little bit. Then I added a little bit more gold wax where I felt it was needed. and a little bit of this green wax over the molded leaves. And then the final step of decorating, I sprinkled over some of these metal micro beads from Little Birdie Crafts. I used heavy gel medium to glue them on. I just take a little bit of gel with my brush, apply it over the spots where I want to put the beads on and then sprinkle some beads over it. After I'd finished filming, I also ended up gluing the lid so that it stays open and applied a few more flowers over it because after I applied all of the molds, the lid was a little bit front heavy so I was struggling to keep it open. So I decided to just glue it permanently open. And yeah, there you guys go. This is the finished piece. I really hope that you enjoyed this video. I hope that maybe I have inspired you to go and create some magic um, to either keep for yourself or give it to somebody else. I am so happy to be finally finished with this piece. I started it um, probably around two months ago or so. And the reason why it took me so long to make it is because I was waiting for the parcel from Little Birdie Crafts to arrive with the flowers and the beads. Because since I ordered them, I wanted to use them on this piece and I wanted to go through with the plan. 
so i hope that you learned something new today like i said links for everything that i mentioned in this video are going to be in the description down below make sure to check out digital collage club i'll be back on making projects with their pictures soon because i finally have some uh, ink in my printer again so that's why it's been a little bit quiet on that front if you would like to sign up with them once again there is discount codes in the description below if you want to sign up with them you may as well use the codes save yourself a little bit of money i also have discount codes for little birdie crafts and daily art also in the description of course make sure to check out my website for more information on what i do my shop masterclasses, etc thank you so 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 much for watching and i will see you guys in the next video bye